In this video, I'll show how to use a sketch or any art that comes from Photoshop or a little software called Alchemy and turn it into AI concept art. I'll be using a Flux AI model. It's a bit heavy. You kind of at least need to have 12 gigs of VRAM, but don't worry. First, I have an option for different laptops with just regular like three or four gigs of VRAM. And this option is different video, different AI model, stable diffusion or SDXL. You can go check it out in the description. Another option, you can run this model without any setup, any installation, right with one only click on a cloud. And that I will also give in the description. It will be running on Run Comfy, a cloud service where you get 25 minutes for free. And it's hassle free, great for exploration. Even if you have no intention to play, you can see how this workflow works. My name is Anton Tinitsky. I've been a 3D artist for over 15 years. I worked with most recently on Marvel Rebels and before that on Penguins of Madagascar. Now I am trying to keep up with AI and sharing it on my YouTube channel. If you are new to ConfUI, the software I'm going to use here, check out my free installation guide on my Patreon. The link is also down in the description. And you can find this workflow along with many others aimed at more automation on my Patreon. There's a lot of stuff there, extra things like 3D models if you want to use some kind of base, a 3D base for your stuff. Go check it out. It might be of a great use to you. This is our Flux workflow and let me explain what's going on here. I will start with our first group and we start with the load image nodes. Here you load anything you want. You can see the magic of AI models. It can read the depths of even of a very vague sketch. I have some recommendations for the resolutions in this particular note. And then we are resizing this to one of these resolutions. I, in this case, I'm using a square format. Square is the most native to a lot of these image models is either SDXL or Flux. However, portraits or landscapes are also fine and I use them a lot, but the square is the best performing from my experience. You don't want to have somewhat of an odd pixel count because it's going to go into this latent space, what's called, and it's going to be compressed but eight times. Therefore, you want these multipliers of eight, and this is 1753, so that resolution is not really that binary or let's say itinerary. It doesn't get divided by eight well, and that will give you Sometimes a good image, sometimes a glitch. And I've experienced that a lot. I've tested out different resolutions and with generally few ones that are in quite often used in practice. Every node you'll see here, it says the particular pack. In this case, it's Confuai Essentials. So you need to go later and custom nodes manager and look for them here. I will list them in the description. Then this goes into the Depths Anything node. This node is using a Depths Anything AI model that is actually reading your sketch and it can interpret it. In a way, this resolution and this resolution kind of cancels each other out. So it takes the shortest side and puts 1024 pixels on that side. But I still prefer to have image resize as well because I also sometimes bring a Depths render straight from Blender and then I can control B bypass this and not even use the Depths Anything model. The Depths Anything model comes from this Confi Control Net pack. You can actually see all the packs are listed here that are used in the workflow. If I go back to Model Manager, I can look for this Depths Anything and download. I downloaded the biggest one. It should be the best performing. When I download it, just reload the Chrome browser. You don't need to restart it. Just refresh, Control R, or any browser you use, and it will get picked up by the node pack. This particular model is independent of Flux or Stable Diffusion. It's a great thing about ConfiWire because here we can learn about different models and how they interact with each other and how we can use them independently of each other if needed. Then I have a preview image to see what we got from that sketch. It's not perfect. And one of the things to make it better is to actually go and sketch out the hands and fill it with paint, sketch out the silhouette so it gives more of a solid color to work with. Then this depth anything goes into the apply flux control net. It's part of the Xlabs custom node pack, which you will also need to download. And it's using a different AI model. So now we've generated the image, that image is passed 
into here, but this image needs to be read by a different AI model. And they train this model separately. It costs tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to train a model to be able to read the depths, and then it becomes a model on itself. So we're using this Flux Depth Control Net version 3 to read the depth image and then the pass information down the line. If I click here, you will see I have three different models and I can go to Manager, Model Manager, and look for the ones you need to download. In this case, this is Xlabs AI Flux Depth Model which I downloaded. Then again, you just refresh your browser and that will be found. Let's go down and then we have empty latent image. So this empty image is very important because our diffusion happens in the latent space and this is our canvas where the image will get generated. You can see the resolution here, 1024. We can, things like you have to match the resolution of your image resize and empty latent image. It's possible to combine them together so you don't have to retype it all the time. For that, I need to find an integer node. It comes from ConfUI Easy Use Pack. I can type in the resolution. I can then go and type it, bring it everywhere where I have 1024, especially if, since it's a square, it's very easy. And in that case, if I then decide to increase resolution, sometimes I can go like 1536, I can type it here and it will get increased everywhere. So low diffusion is entering the model input on the Xlab sampler. Then I have image that goes into the latent image on Xlab's sampler. And next thing I have our prompt group. For prompting, we have to use this dual clip loader. And there are a lot of clip models that we can download, but in this case, I'm using this tool. And if I go into the Confi Manager and look for the clip L, I'll find one there. And then I need to find the other one, which is t 5 xxxl and look for that one as well. And I have a bunch of them already downloaded. I think I need to d remove a couple to free up some space. I haven't seen much difference between them. I've tried and I stick to the regular FP8 safe tenses. And by the way, safe tenses means that this file has been checked for viruses, and therefore it's a, called safe. It's like a safe array. Then this goes into the prompting node, which is clip text and code. I just had to rename it so it makes a bit more sense. So clip text and code, prompt, rename it to positive prompt. Here you type in your prompt. I can recommend it to say use ChatGPT or Gemini or any other LLM model to come up with a prompt that then goes to Flux Guidance. Flux Guidance, I don't really know why, but apparently we just have to plug it in there so it helps with this prompting and that, that gets piped into the conditioning. And then we have negative conditioning, which is coming from the negative prompt. However, in Flux, negative prompt doesn't really get subtracted from positive like it does in SDXL. It has usually very little effect on the final image, but we still have it and still is piping into the negative con conditioning. Now let's talk about the X sampler. We have our noise seed. Often if you want to regenerate the image you've created before, say you want to pass it to someone else, you will tell them the noise seed. By default, it is set to randomize and it will get like a huge number, like in trillions. And I don't really like that. It doesn't really matter what kind of number you have there, uh, you know, a number 11, number 12 or 10,000 or 10 trillion. So I will go, I change the randomized to increment. So every time I generate an image, it just goes one up and I can put it like at one and it will go, the next generation will be two, three or five. It's very easy to keep track. And then we have steps. Steps is the quality control. You want to put in somewhere between 20 to 50. Above 50, it's basically diminished returns. You wait for longer and you don't get a better image. I set it to 25 because I get a nice image and I don't have to wait for a long time because Flux is quite demanding. Other settings, are, honestly, I don't use them and they're not really relevant in this case. They don't, they don't affect anything in a positive way, but you can screw it up and affect it in a negative way. Then, We've created here a diffuse latent image, and then we do need to decode it from latent space into the pixels. And to decode it, we have to use this Flux VAE decode uh, model. VAE stands for Variational Autoencoder, whatever that means in the end of the day, but you can find that model, you can need to download it. It's 
Lux VAE model. It's pretty small. You can download it and run it. You just reload your Chrome and you'll be able to find it in the drop down menu. Then this goes into the save image. And here you can change the name, the prefix. This is a fairly simple setup. On my channel, I already published videos about more automation, like doing a batch rounds of multiple images. You can see them on my channel if you're interested because I'm all for automation and really like to deal with single images. However, more automation creates more complexity and it's hard to always explain in just one video. If you want to find out how to fix these hands and make them look nice, click on that video on the right top corner. Also, it's in the description and I will guide you through that.